am Stormy True. I am from an amazing, large, little village out of Chicago named Oak Park, Illinois. I live in the Pacific Northwest. My work in this exhibition are three pieces. It's a three-piece series. It shows the expansion of the African-American mind necessary to navigate through the white world through maintaining our cultural patterns, um, representing strength and integrity. They're all titled Survivalist Perspective. They're Survivalist Perspective the first, the Survivalist Perspective Her Blood Tears, and the third is Survivalist. In all my 40 years, I have always been in the flow and the rapids of the movement. Whether it's called Black Lives Now or Civil Rights Before, my life is a continuous movement, you know? Um, and each part of my life and all the amazing aspects of my life as Stormy and my life as a Black American all influences my art. So I developed um, my art at a very young age, uh, creating things from nothing, from my grandmother's seamstress scraps, um, through then creating my own kind of style. When I moved to the Pacific Northwest, knowing that I was a creator and a trendsetter ultimately, um, just with my futuristic ideas and attempting to put them in tangible places, um, it felt like my art got taken and out into the world without my name on it. And at that point I was like, okay, I'm wearing solid color clothes. I'm gonna make sure like the art that I produce because ultimately the art that I produce is the spirit that is like, you know, evolving inside of me. And it's really up to me as the spirit mover shaker to like choose to, you know, let someone else participate in your spirit. You know, it's nice to have like choosing your garments wisely, but once the world sees, you know, all your wisdom, you know, and still treating you and stumping you down, it doesn't really feel like you want to reflect. So at that point, you know, I ended up, you know, creating the technique that you'll see at the um, exhibit there about 10 years ago. And I was just like, okay, you know, I was moving through a lot of different spaces psychologically in my life, and that art was pushing me through that new creative no one's ever seen but literally no one <laughs> you know like maybe my son in the room and then it got to a point where i got married and it was like okay you know and he was like okay wife well, what do you want to do you know and it's like i think i want to do my art i get to get out of the closet like my spirit all the art spirit in my spirit is bubbling up it was almost like if i saw a stranger it was like ah, how are you how are you doing I'm, 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 I'm. You know, like, I've been in the room all day creating. I need friends, but not quite friends. It was like I needed some other spirit to bounce off of. You know, you, you can only have so much one thing, you know? So then um, the grants start popping up. I, I I started showing people some things. I, I love making co commemorative jackets, denim jackets, and putting my techniques on and, and adding, you know, like, my grandmother's pins and you know some patches from the elders and just like having something that is always there and protecting me that's like beyond me and and material just happens to be that you know it's another thing like why I'm working with felt because it's like it's timeless you know what I mean it, it really brings you back to like the basic my first experience of coming out you know of the artist closet you know um, my girlfriend you know who's seen my art and she is into art. She's like, okay, Stormy, where, you know, there's like the mayor's art show coming up. And I was like, oh, I don't really know, you know, like who really knows it's COVID, but what a great time. It's like, no one gets to see my face. So it's like, I'm still in the closet, but not in the closet. So it was like, okay, go for it. So I went for it and I got the mayor's, the jurors award for the mayor's art show. So I was like, okay, you know, and then like, I got a little bit more confident as an artist. I went to go see it and I was like, oh, this is not how I need to position it. You know, you get so critical about yourself. And then it was like, okay, you know, Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter. There's money, there's grants. But I felt like my voice, 
I needed my voice to be seen and heard through my art. And the mayor's art show did not do that. So I just kind of waited. And when this popped up, and what it actually gave was like, not only did you receive a grant, you know what I mean? You had other people, BIPOC people of color in your community, you know what I mean? But you also had like a gallery experience where you are functioning as a whole, like as if, you know, like we are the diaspora here coming in one place, giving this place, this, this safe space to truly express ourselves, you know what I mean? And allowing for it to be art, which was like my little niche, you know, that's kind of why I was in the closet. So it was like, okay, I get to really be seen here. You know what I mean? And this is one of the top accreditations or acknowledgements in the art world in our community. So it was like, okay, Stormy, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I, I go back and forth with pulling myself up by my bootstraps because I keep telling my husband, I was like, my people didn't have bootstraps, you know what I mean? So like, you know, it's like, you know, so I just, I, I, put, I put my vest on and I was like, okay, let's, let's do this grant and put it out there. You know what I mean? And we're gonna like, we're gonna see what happens. And what it brought was wisdom and strength and the ability to know that as an artist, I never have to be politically correct. I just have to be artist correct. You know what I mean? Because there's so many people out there that don't have, that won't share their voice because it's politically correct. And they can just see my voice through that. You know what I mean? And that was like, okay, this is a great opportunity to be in this space, you know? So I went for it and you know, you know, at 11.59 or 11.58, <laughs> you know, I press the button, you know, and, and I, I give thanks and I appreciate that I, I, I got, I received the grant. From the grant, oh, there's a wonderful young BIPOC artist in town that I love. I bought one of her original pieces. And so at that point I was like, okay, let me just go get canvas. So I bought some canvas. I gave her some canvases. And I was like, now I need a space because now I'm getting big or whatever. You know, I'm coming out of the closet. I need a, a room and not a closet. You know what I mean? So um, I rented out um, a studio. And um, now I'm producing art and have a space just for my art, which is a blessing too. As an artist, as a human, and as a Black American, I have different opinions overall. For artists, for the Black Lives Matter movement, as an artist, it has allowed I and other artists to be seen through not just the struggles and the pain of our so-called history, but the livelihood, the, the joy, you know, the evolution, the, you know, um, the intelligence as we move through, we, we get to see more aspects of black art during the movement that is not confined to rap and hip hop. That has been a blessing. And from that movement gives other people that are not resonating with the movement before this movement, you know, that's not resonating, they can actually see myself and people like me in a different light through the arts and not through the pain in the art. I'm happy that the movement is happening now. Um, there's been many movements in human lifetime. Our movement as a Black American continues to get past them. Um, through the beginning of, you know, the Americas of time and us defending our rights and calling it and claiming it a movement and whether we're marching or whether we're sitting or whether we're protesting, you know, whether it's apartheid there or Jim Crow here, there's a part of our movements that never get resolved. It gets passed over. And so I'm waiting to see that there is light at the end of the tunnel instead of honestly giving money to, giving money instead of, 
communicating about the solution. You know what I mean? It's like having a trust fund kid that has that don't know about morals or love or etiquette, but they sure do got nice clothes. You know what I mean? And they always got the nicest things, but they are fool. And it's like we can continue to, to claim what it is we should get, but because it's systemic, then we need to find a systemic resolution to. And I feel like the movement may just be another movement. Did the civil rights movement do stuff too? Yes. But if it really had a resolution, we would not be having a Black Lives Matter movement right now. And that's real talk. Complete facts. <laughs> you know what I mean? If there was real things that happened to resolve the women's suffrage movement, we wouldn't have issues right now with gender roles in the workplace. I'm just saying like, yeah, keep doing the movements, keep doing the protests, keep killing us, keep pushing everyone down. But as a whole, like something is gonna have to give. It's gonna have to be more than a movement. What I would like the audience to see or my fellow humans to feel is that the BLM movement that we're moving through seems to never fade. It's the current face of our continuous struggle to acknowledge and embrace and protect our humanity within a nation that has built their structures to systematically diminish our value and our existence. Honestly, it's just the acknowledgement of us being human. So through my works and my joy of humanity within my people and what we look like, I hope that the audience walks away with the realization that through this complex reality that we move through, that there's extra things that we have to gain, and extra things we have to carry, and extra psychological weapons that we need to have in order to defend what is looked upon as privilege. Oh man, it goes so much deeper to that because when you look at the pieces, it's like it could be any one of my great grandmama to my auntie that owns the business, to the cousin on a corner store, like all of those spaces, no matter what theme or what branch of reality of American titles you have, everybody that looked like me has had the same oppressed steps and steps and steps in order for them to achieve. And the only difference is some of them purchase better shoes. And so as you look at the brains and as you look at the faces of my art, think about the complexities and, and, and the hurdles and the, the creeks and the rivers and the oceans that my people have to go through every day just to be themselves and to accept the authenticity within us. My th favorite three adult artists. When I was young, I really liked Matisse because I went to like a really preppy school and I was like, man, he draws like me. He's a horrible drawer, but man, look at those colors. It's like, our stars are the same, you know? <laughs> I was like really feeling it. And so then as I got older and I, you know, there's one lady, she lives and she's from Chicago. Her name is Annie Lee. And she depicts like the essence of the culture. She always has scenes. And, the, and, and her people are always like in movement, almost like they're dancing, but it's like the scene either at, you know, the, the family barbecue or it's at, you know, what the town hall looks like. And that is beautiful. I love her, very colorful. The other one would have to be Edward Clark. He is, you know, a BIPOC man, but I love his simplicity of just like his intellectual brain. Even so, it's just like scrapes the paint across in a circle frame. You're just like, man, this is simple, but it takes you on horizons, beyond horizons, beyond horizons. And that, I mean, I could dream of that. Um, my other artist would have to be Jacob Lawrence. You know what I mean? Like that migration is no joke, you know? And to see it in, so, in such colorful light, you know what I mean? There, and, Oh man, yeah, the art of the movement with him, that always stands because, you know, my, my family, we share those secrets. I mean, not, not even the secrets, but their stories of each individual great migration. You know, I, I know each one of my grandmother's siblings and their migration more than I know what ancient African country I come from outside of my DNA. Do you know what I mean? And that right there is like part of African-American history that you share.
you know? So it's like, if you can trace that, then you can trace down from like going back to where you came from, from there. And it's always like the community is the same. Most of the people I have now in my life are literally connected to my grandmother's people that she met during that migration right now. It's really, I mean, you know, and, and it's like, those are the histories that people teach you to like, you know, oh, yeah, they're just black history, you know, oh, here's a little bit of that. Like, that is the joy of it. You know what I mean? Like, my family know people over 100 years ago. You know what I mean? They can go back to their same community out of all the bad parts. It's like, yes, we still know, like, at least to the people that are alive, they can still count back to what that is. And like, you know, that's strength right there. That's freedom right there. That's hope right there, you know? So you gotta know where you came from in order to even project the future you want everybody else to see. As this movement flows and we're in it now, and as it dissipates or meanders into another stream, I need to not only see people that look like me in the grocery store, but I also need people to look like me in my doctor's office. I also need people to look at me at my chiropractor. I also need people that look like me as my kindergarten teacher for my kids. Like there's parts about it, it's like, yay, yay, give us money and give us all these grants. But literally our community is giving grants to the organization. They're not giving a grant to a black organization that allows for them to help them allocate where it go. And the people that are there are the same continuous faces that we see throughout be before, you, you get what I mean? Be before BLM and before civil rights, it's just like leading into family. Like we need to see some new faces. We need to see some new energy. And by golly, if you don't know what type of black activists they are, then you need to ask somebody because it's one thing to have a face and that's what they used to do. That's gave us affirmative action. But we out of just seeing the face and you telling the face what to do. Everybody know that's real. You know, we talking about like being woke, like let's let's get above being woke. You know what I mean? Let's, let's work on enlightenment. You know what I mean? We can sit here and wait for Godot or, or we can jump up and do something about it. And I feel like the title ships, like it's like it's great that you want to give money out, but really, if that organization is not changing within the skeleton of the organization, then the money you're getting out is just like, oh great, yeah, you had a concert, oh great, yay, you have a position for someone or just grant, uh, not not quite. I'm saying grant money, but but you guys are different because the arts brings in different things, and 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 the Jordan continuously brings in multicultural international thing. It almost brings in the culture to a very dry place.